In this example problem, we're going to find the stress and strain condition corresponding to a given axial load, zero kips, and a given moment, 53 kip feet, which we'll say is equivalent to the self weight of this beam for the, the section that's shown. And we're going to use the strain compatibility approach to find the uh, stresses and strains here. You can see we have uh, the same rectangular section that we've been working with in this class. So this is a kind of a continuation of our module five examples. We have three half inch diameter strands, five KSI concrete, and you can see some of the other properties for our, our concrete, the strain at ultimate, the locked in strain differential and the tensile strength of our, our concrete. The first thing that we need to do is we'll need to find the transform section properties. And we can start by finding the modulus of elasticity for our concrete. So we'll use our, our ACI expression. So 57,000 times the square root of 5,000 PSI. And I want this in KSI, so I'm going to divide by 1,000 pounds per kip, which will give us a value here of 4,030 KSI. Next, we need to find our modular ratio. And we do this by dividing our modulus for our pre-stressing, 28,500 KSI, divided by the modulus of our concrete, 4,030 KSI, which will give us a modular ratio here of 7.1. At this point, we can find use the modular ratio to find our transform section properties. And we can start by finding our transformed area. Our transformed area is going to be the area of our concrete plus the transformed pre-stressing. So our modular ratio uh, times the area of our pre-stressing. We know here that our area of concrete is equal to the gross area minus the area of our pre-stressing. So we can plug that in and then uh, we can move one area of pre-stressing over here and uh, that'll give us a transformed area of our gross area plus n minus one times the area of our pre-stressing. This is a, a nice form for us to have this equation because uh, in pre-stressed concrete design and precast concrete design, we'll often use standard sections and uh, these standard sections will often have standard gross areas and gross moment of inertias. So we can use our standard section properties with this equation to find our, our transformed area uh, you know, pretty easily. We can now find our transformed area and our transformed area is going to be equal to our gross area, which is just our 12 inches times 24 inches plus 7.1 minus 1 times the area of our pre-stressing, which is 0 0.459 square inches. So this will give us a value here of 290.8 square inches. Next, we can find the transformed centroid of the section. So our Y, T, uh, so we'll take the distance from the top as our Y, T. So the distance from the top to the centroid of the section will be Y, T. And uh, this will be the summation of our different areas times the distance from the top to the centroid of that area. So our first area is our overall gross section. So this area here has a 24 by 12 inch area. And the distance from the top to the centroid is going to be 12 inches. Next, we can add in our transformed pre-stressing. So 7.1 minus 1 times 0.459 times the distance from the top to the centroid of our pre-stressing, which will be 20 inches. And we'll divide all this by our areas, 
24 times 12 plus 7.1 minus 1 times 0 0.459 square inches. So this will give us a centroid of 12.1 inches. We can check this conceptually by looking at our section and where the pre-stressing is. So we know the overall cent or the centroid of our gross section is going to be 12 inches, 24 over 2, and the pre-stressing is going to pull that centroid down. So we would expect our transform our transform centroid to be greater than 12 inches. We can see that we have a central a transform centroid of 12.1. So conceptually, the the centroid uh, checks. Next, we can find our transform moment of inertia, or ITR. And we're going to use the parallel axis theorem. So we take the summation of all of our i's for the, the component itself, plus ad squared for each component. Uh, we're going to assume that any pre-stressing or steel has zero moment of inertia itself. So for our pre-stressing and our steel, we'll only consider the AD squared component of our, uh, our parallel axis theorem. So here we can find our, our ITR. We have the uh, gross moment of inertia for the, the gross section and the AD squared component. And then we only have pre-stressing, so we have the AD squared component for our pre-stressing. So uh, plugging in our, our numbers here, we'll have our transformed um, moment of inertia is going to be 12 inches times 24 inches to the third divided by 12 plus 12 times 24 times uh, yt 12.1 minus 12 squared plus 7.1 minus 1 times 0.459, this is our transform pre-stressing, times our distance component here, which is going to be 12.1 minus 20 squared. So here we'll get our transform moment of inertia to equal about 14,000 inches to the fourth. So now we have our transformed moment of inertia, our transformed area, and our transformed centroid for our section. Our next step is to find the decompression force and decompression moment. So our, our pre-stressing is going to cause an initial strain or compressive strain in our section. And our the eccentricity of that pre-stressing is going to cause an initial curvature in our section. So the decompression force and moment are the force and moment required to return the section to zero strain and zero curvature. So essentially to uh, overcome or counteract those uh, uh, pre-stressing effects. So here's an, an equation for n naught, our decompression force, and m naught, our decompression moment. And you can see we have uh, terms included to account for our, our time effects and concrete, steel, and pre-stressing. For this problem, we're going to look at uh, short-term loading only. So we're going to assume that all these uh, strains are equal to zero. So essentially, we can get rid of these three last terms. We can simplify the n-naught expression then, shown here. And plugging in our known values, we'll have our n-naught equal to 28,500 times 6.0 times 10 to the negative third times the area of our pre-stressing 0.459 square inches. And this will give us an n naught of 78.5 kips. We can make similar simplifications to our m naught expression. So we'll cancel out a couple terms and simplify to get our m naught expression and plugging in our known values here, we'll have m naught equal to 28,500 KSI times 6.0 times 10 to the negative third 
times yp1, which is the distance from the centroid of the pre-stressing strands to the centroid of the section. So we'll have 20 inches minus 12.1 inches, and then times 0.459, the total area of our pre-stressing, and this will give us a value of 51.7 Kip feet. We can now use these values with our transform section properties and the applied moment and axial load to find the strain at the centroid and the curvature in our section. We can now plug our applied axial load and applied moment into the equations that we derived in class for the strain at centroid and curvature. So we have no applied axial load, so we'll have zero minus our decompression force of 78.5 kips divided by 4,030 KSI, the modulus for our concrete, and 290.9 square inches, the transformed area for our section, and we'll get a value of 0 0.067 times 10 to the negative third. And that's our strain at the centroid of our section. We can uh, plug in our applied moment then. So we had a, an applied moment given of 53 kip feet minus our decompression moment, 51.7 kip feet and times 12 inches per foot divided by 4,030 KSI times our transformed moment of inertia, 14,000 inches to the fourth. So we'll get a curvature here of 0 0.276 times 10 to the negative six radians per inch. And this is the curvature in the section. So you can see here shown we have the strain at the centroid and the curvature in our section. And we can do a conceptual check here to figure out which way our signs are. Uh, we know that the curvature due to pre-stressing itself is going to increase compression in the bottom and increase tension at the top. Here we can see that our applied moment 53 kip feet is greater than our 51.7 kip foot uh, moment from our pre-stressing. So what we would expect is an increase in compression in the top and an increase in tension in the bottom. So you can see here a, a positive curvature in this case is going to increase our compression in the top and add uh, tension in the bottom. So that's just a, a way that you can check conceptually the, the signs for your curvature. We can use the strain at the centroid and the curvature to find strains and stresses at any point in the cross-section depth. So in this example, we're going to find strains in the top and bottom fibers, and we're also going to find the strain at the centroid of our pre-stressing. We'll start with the strain in the top fiber, and we can plug into our equation here, our strain at the centroid, negative 0.067, times 10 to the negative third minus our curvature 0.279 times 10 to the negative six radians per inch and then times our yt 12.1 inches and we'll get a, a top fiber strain here equal to negative 0.0 seven, four times 10 to the negative third. And conceptually, you can see we expected the top fiber compression to increase. So this value is greater than the strain at the centroid. So conceptually, we're okay. And we can use this then to find our stress just by taking it times our modulus, 4,030 KSI 
times negative 0 0.074 times 10 to the negative third. And we'll get a, a value here of negative 0.284 KSI. So uh, remember negative is compression. So this is a, a compression stress. Uh, next we can find our bottom fiber strain by plugging in our strain at the centroid, uh, negative 0 0.067 times 10 to the negative third minus our curvature, 0.279 times 10 to the negative 6 radians per inch, times 12.1 minus 24 inches. So we'll get a value of negative 0 0.0637 times 10 to the negative third. So you can see this is a smaller compression, so our curvature is adding uh, tension here. So conceptually, we're checking here. Uh, and then we can take this times our modulus. So 4,030 KSI times the strain, 0 0.0637 times 10 to the negative third. And we'll get a, a stress here of negative 0 0.257. KSI. So now we have our top and bottom fiber stresses, and uh, next we can find the strain in our pre-stressing. To do this, we'll do the same thing, except we'll also add in our locked-in strain differential. So here we have our strain in the pre-stressing is going to be equal to the strain at the centroid, point, negative 0 0.067 times 10 to the negative third minus our curvature, 0.279 times 10 to the negative 6 radians per inch, times the distance from the centroid to level pre-stressing, so 12.1 minus 20, and then plus our locked-in strain differential of 6.0 times 10 to the negative third. So this will give us a strain here of 5 0.94 times 10 to the negative third. And we can take this times our modulus in our pre-stressing. So 28,500 times 5.94 times 10 to the negative third. And that'll give us a stress in our pre-stressing of 169.2 KSI. So here we're assuming that uh, we have a linear elastic behavior, so we need to make sure that we're less than the uh, yield stress for our pre-stressing. So the yield stress is typically around 243 KSI, so we're uh, our stress in our pre-stressing is less than the yield stress in our pre-stressing, so uh, we're okay here. So that uh, concludes this example. Uh, we've used the strain compatibility approach to find the st stress in our pre-stressing and the stress in the bottom and top fiber uh, in our concrete section.